Well, my name is Catherine Wynn, and uh, I live now at Litchfield, Salt Marsh Cove, a condominium there. Right. And I grew up in Georgia. I heard about Pearl Harbor. I was out walking with my mother that sun Sunday afternoon. That's all I remember. And uh, I was still in college. I went two years to junior college. And then I went to Macon, Georgia, and had a, uh, a defense job there at a big air depot called uh, Warner Robbins. Have you ever heard of it? It was a huge thing. And we had to work three shifts. That was the, <laughs> that was the bad thing about it. I was there about a year and a half. And uh, my mother heard Colonel Ruth Cheney Streeter speak on the radio. She was the head of the Women Marines and she was at Hunter College and she was recruiting uh, women then. And so she said, I, why don't you join the Marine Corps? I never thought about going to the service. So uh, since I, the defense job was, that, at that time, you know, everything was crowded. Everybody was in the, in the war effort. I talked a friend into going with me and she backed out. And that was it. That was in Macon, Georgia. I had boot camp there, but it wasn't tough. I didn't think it was tough. You just listened and took orders. <laughs> and after that, we, I had um, KP for two or three weeks until they, we got up a quota to come down to Congaree Field. That was an auxiliary air base outside of Columbia. And we had uh, Corsairs that were training. They were, they were planes, uh, I think they were the Navy planes. And I worked in the, in the squadron office there, keeping records for the, a big old, uh, big old sergeant that was dying to go to the Pacific. <laughs> So I, w I was there for about uh, two years. Then went back to Cherry Point and went back to Lejeune and was, got out there. Office work, office work. But it was good duty because you could get on a train in Columbia and go away f to New York for a weekend easily. On Friday afternoon, you could get on a train and and spend the night on the, I think it was a Silver Meteor, the Silver Comet, and have all day Saturday and Sunday in New York City. That was fun because they were very nice to service women. You could, uh, they, they gave you tickets to everything. They treated you well, very well. Then we'd come back Sunday night, sleep all night <laughs> on the train. We went to shows and we shopped. And we went to see the girls that lived around New York City. Well, we had a big office. We did. A squadron office to keep the records of all the men. The payroll and the uh, service record books. <laughs> it seems like a long time ago, and it was, too. I went in in uh, 43. I was 20. My parents had to sign for me to go in. I had to give up my defense job in October before they would even talk to me about going in the service. And I was sworn in in Atlanta in uh, December 43, and then uh, I didn't get called up until uh, March. I waited so long. My father wrote to Senator Russell, who was <laughs> He'd gone to school with him, Senator uh, Richard B. Russell, and he found out that I was, could be called, would be called up in, in March. But it was a long wait. They were trying to make up a quota of, of women. Very rustic. <laughs> we, we had a pot belly stove in the, in the, the barracks. And uh, there must have been a dozen girls in that particular one. 
and uh, I always had an upper bunk <laughs> instead of a lower. I think it had been a, a camp for the CCC camp, you know. I think that's what it had been, and we went in and used it. The food wasn't very good. I remember that. But at Camp Lejeune, we had all women cooks in that section we were in. The food was wonderful, but the food was, I don't remember the food being very good. We were glad to get into Columbia and eat in that. Yeah. <laughs> people were very nice to service women. Lots and lots of service people in, in Columbia. I met my husband before I went in. He was in, um, I met him in Macon. He was in the, at a USO dance, and then he went to India for two years. We weren't married, but he went. He had a long duty in India. He was a draftee. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a wonderful experience. It was my mother's idea that I tried, and uh, it was. I was a day student at college, you know, stayed home and I was a day so she said, I think it'll do you good and I, I liked it. Made some good friends. I wouldn't have taken anything for it. There you go. Most girls that I talk to say the same thing, the ones that I meet around here. My mother was impressed to hear in this this Colonel speak this woman who was head of it at uh, Honda College in New York, and she's a small group, you know. So she was, in, she put the idea in my head. But I married a, a, a Yankee and went to Massachusetts, and that was a bit of a distraction. Had a family up there, so. But most of the girls were from, uh, from a lot of them were from New England. And uh, not many from down here. I didn't know any Southern girls over in. <laughs> I was discharged in 46, December 46, and my husband had, we weren't married, he had come back from India and uh, went back to Connecticut and took his job there with Pratt Whitney and we decided to get married. We moved to Connecticut and uh, lived there for six months and then we, we went up to um, Cambridge and my husband became tennis and squash pro at Harvard. That was his favorite thing to do. He played a lot of tennis in India and he was there. We, were, we lived there for 32 years. And then he came back down here and decided to take an early retirement. And we came down here to Litchfield and took a job at uh, Litchfield Racquet Club. When? When? Uh, 78, 1978. I had three children and uh, all three came south to college. One's in in Brevard, North Carolina, one's in Litchfield, one's still in Massachusetts. Would love to be down here. Well, I'm proud that I was in the, in the service. Proud I was in the service. My husband said, why do you want to join the Marines? Or why do you want to go in the service? Every, all the men would say, why do you want to go in the service? Why do you want to do that? <laughs> and what was the answer? <laughs> well, I don't know. Free a Marine to fight, free a man to fight, I guess. I don't know. I don't really know. I didn't like my defense job because we, I said the three shifts. We had to work uh, day, daytime shift or the evening or the day, or the, uh, what was the third one? Midnight. Midnight and then the, what was the third one? Well, you go on at midnight. I don't know, but it was graveyard. Graveyard, that's right. That was rough. In the heat in the summertime, trying to trying to see. We didn't have any air conditioning either in our barracks, but I don't remember remember the heat being so bad.
Well, we went up to, uh, maybe Betty told you, we went up one day to the uh, 65th, I believe it was the 65th anniversary of the women Marines. We went up to, for the day to, uh, to Camp Lejeune. And all the girls, they were very friendly. And uh, I wouldn't want my daughter to go in now, I don't think. I, well, she wouldn't do it anyway, but she. But they were nice, nice girls. Most of them had been to Iraq and back. A lot of them had families, some had children, but they were nice, mature girls. I don't think they should go into combat. I have a nephew who's, who's graduating this, uh, this uh, weekend uh, as a, uh, down at Fort Venning. And uh, he just graduated from Presbyterian College a year ago and enlisted, and he's uh, gonna be a ranger. And that's the really elite, roughest one of all, but he's, he's gone through that. I'm, I hope to go down to his graduation. He's 22. Was I glad to get back south? Yes, I was. I was ready. My husband wanted to go come back down here so he could play tennis all the time and teach. I was a corporal, but I was up for sergeant, but I didn't, didn't, didn't make it. <laughs> if I'd stayed in a little longer, but I was ready to get out. Most people were. Okay. We've, we've met a lot of nice uh, service women, though, since we've been down here. 